Hi everyone, I'm Balkat and this is the last tutorial of the Punk series. Last time we left when we created the movement of the ball. We also made the ball bounce off the walls as well as off the blocks. We also made the ball reset once the ball got off the screen, either to the left or to the right. This time we are going to make the scoring system, meaning if the ball goes to the left, then player 2 is going to get a point, and if the ball goes to the right, then player 1 is going to get a point. In our code, we are going to change some things. The first thing is that we're going to go down to our ball class. In our ball class, we are going to look for our move function. In our move function, we are going to have a return. That return is going to be a point. It's going to tell us if player 1 or player 2 scored. We first have to think when does player 1 score and when does player 2 score. Player 1 is the one controlling block 1. As we see here in the image, block 1 is the block on the left, meaning that player 1 gets a point when the ball goes to the right. Block 2 is the one on the right, so player 2 gets a point when the ball goes to the left. In our code, we already have the left and the right side of the screen as some parameters that the move function needs. Because of that, we are going to use that part of the code to tell us which player got a point. Let's look for that section of the code. Right here, we have our left and our right part of the code, meaning that in this case, the ball went off the left side of the screen, and in this case, the ball went off to the right side of the screen. So in here, after it goes to the left, we are going to put return 2. That is because player 2 is the one that scored. If it goes off to the right, we are going to return 1. Now we know that this function is going to give us either a 1 or a 2, depending on which player scored. Now we're going to go down to our main loop, and here we have our ball.move function. Because that is going to give us now a number, we're going to make this another variable. That variable is going to be point, and point is going to be equal to ball.move. What we wanted to do is that depending on what point is, it's going to add something to one of our scores. For that, we're going to need to create two more variables in our main function. So up here, we're going to create score one, which is going to be equal to zero at first, and then score two, which is going to be zero as well. And now we are going to change that score depending on the value of point. So we have to do this. If point equals equals 1, that means that player 1 scored, then we have to add 1 to score 1. For that, we put score 1 plus equals 1. Then we have to do the same for point 2. So we put if point equals equals 2, then we have to add 1 to score 2. So we put score, score 2 plus equals 1. What this LIF means is the same as saying else if, meaning that's first going to check if point is equal to 1. If point is equal to 1, then it's going to add this, and then it's going to keep going with our code. However, if point is not equal to 1, then it's going to check if point is equal to 2. This makes the program run a little bit smoother, and it helps with the speed of the program. Now that we have both of our scores, score 1 and score 2, we are going to write those scores into our board. For that, we are going to create a new function. So let's go up, and right here, let's create that function. So it'll be def draw score. And it's going to need a window, it's going to need the score 
for player one and it's going to need the score for player two. What we want this to do is write something because we want to write, we have to initiate our writing font. For now I'm going to put pass because at the very beginning of our code, we have to put something else. Right after we import the pygame, we have to put pygame.font.init. What this let us do is write things with Python because we initialize the font function. So now we're allowed to do it. Let's go back to our new function and right here in draw score, we can write now. So we're going to put font equals pygame.font.sysfont. Now this is going to let us create a font. A font needs some parameters. The first one's going to be the name of the font. Those fonts are the ones that are in Microsoft Word, in PowerPoint, in Excel, like Arial, Times New Roman, all that stuff. If you don't know a, if you don't know any names, you can just search fonts in your web browser and you can find them and just paste it here. The one that I like to use is Arial. I think it looks nice and simple. And now we have to put a size. What size do we want our text to be? For now, let's just put 30 and then we'll see if that is too big or too small. Now that we have our font, we're going to create a new variable, which is going to be text. And in here, we are going to write what we want our font to say. So we're going to put player one. So it's going to tell us the score of player one. So we have to put plus the string of score one. Now score one is going to be a number. So we have to change that into a string so it can be added to this other string. So everything is the text. Now we're going to add player two. So we put some quotation marks and now because I want them to be a little bit separated, I want them to be right next to each other, I'm going to put some space bars in between just to give it some space. And now I'm going to put player two and I'm going to do the same thing plus the string of score two. Now we have to create that text as a function that Pygame can understand. For that, we're going to create a new variable again, which is going to be write. Now write is going to be equal to font dot render. Now that's going to need a text. We already have it. So we just put text. The anti-alias is the orientation that the text is going to be because we want our text to be horizontal. We're going to put a one. If you want it to be vertical, I believe you'll put a zero but I'm not sure on that. You can just go to pygame.org and you can find the information on this function. And now we're going to put a color. We want that color for now to be white. However, if you want to change the color, there is a video that I made where you can see how to create different colors and how to code them. Lastly, we are going to put that writing section into our screen. So for that, we have to put win.blit. That is going to allow us to put something, an image or a text into a screen. So the first thing that's going to need is going to need the object or the text that we're going to put in, that we're going to put in the screen. So that object in this case is going to be the right object, what we just created. And then it's going to need a position. And I want it to be at the center of our screen, but on the top side of it. And for that, we're going to need the middle of our screen in the X axis. And we know that the total size of our screen in our X axis is the width. So if we grab our width and then we divide that by two, we are in the middle of our screen. Now what we have to do is put our Y axis. And I want our Y axis to be a little bit lower than the top. So we're going to put it, I don't know, 
50 for now. However, if we do this, then this text is going to start at this position. If we see here in the screen, if it starts at that position, it's not really going to be centered. So for that, we are going to need to do some mathematical stuff. And we're going to need to subtract the size of our text. Coming back to the code, we have to put this to make it work. So we have to subtract half the size of what we're going to write. So I put minus write dot get underscore width, open and close parenthesis, and then we also divide that by two. This write dot get width is a function that gets us the width of whatever it is we're going to write. And we want to divide that by two because we want it to be in the center of the screen. If you want to, you can also do it with the, the Y axis. For now, we're not going to do it. Let's just see how it looks. If we see it necessary, then we will add it. So now we have our draw score. Now we are going to call this draw score. We want to draw our score every time we, we redraw our window. So for that, we're going to need to call it in our redraw window function. So we put draw score. For draw score, we need three parameters. One is our window, and then we need score one and score two. For now, just put score one and score two. But we need to pass these two parameters to our redraw function. So whenever we call redraw window, we're also going to need to add score one as a parameter and score two as another parameter. Now that we have that in our main loop, we just have to add both of those to our redraw window. We have to add our score one and our score two. Remember that we call this two times, so we can just copy and paste this, copy it right there and paste it in our re redraw window inside our loop. Now we can try to see if it works. Let's run the program and we see that we have right here, player one, player two, and we have the score. Now we can see that if the ball goes off to one side of the screen, let's say it goes to the left, then player two should get a one. Yes, it gets a one. And if it goes to the right, player one gets a one. So now it's working. If you want it, you can just leave it like this, like the game is working, it's fine. Everything is working as it should be. But now we're just going to do some stuff to make it better. Let's go back to our code. Now that we have the program working, we are going to allow someone to win. If you kept playing for a while in the game, you can see that the game never really ends. You can keep on playing until the score is 500 and it wouldn't finish. But we need to change that. We want our game to finish eventually. So for that, we're going to make someone allowed to win. For now, it's going to be if someone gets to five points. If either player one or player two reach five points, then that person is going to win. For that, we're going to need first to draw a winning message. So we're going to create a new function. Let's come up back here in our functions and that new function is going to be dev winning. Winning is going to need a window and it's going to need a player, either player one or player two, depending on who won. In here, we're going to do something very similar to draw a score. So I'm just going to copy it and paste it. So we don't have to rewrite everything. We're going to have the same format. I'm going to change the size of our font to make it look bigger. I'm going to put 100. We're going to see if it's too big or not, but it should work. Now, in our text, we don't want to put our score anymore. So I'm just going to erase all that stuff. And now what I, what I wanted to say is player, then t say which player won. So player plus the string of player plus one. Now this is going to tell us that player one or player two won the game. 
I want that to be red, just to be very, very bright. Now, in here it's, going to, it's telling me a problem. That is because red is undefined. So I'm going to go back to the very top where we define our colors. So right here we have black and white. So I'm going to define the color red. Red in RGB mode, just like you can see up here, is the very first one. So I put 255, 0, and 0. Now we created red. Let's go back to our function. And let's see what else we, what else we can change. I wanted to still start at the very middle of the screen. But now I also wanted to start at the middle of the screen in the Y axis. So I'm going to do the same process. Height divided by 2 minus right dot get underscore height divided by 2. Now that we know where our message is going to be, we need to update our screen. So that message is written right there. So we're going to put a pygame.display.update. Now we need to call this function in our main loop. So let's go back to our main program. And here in our loop, we need to check something. That is because our winning message is only going to come if player one or player two got five points. So we're going to do something similar to what we have up here. We're going to put if score one equals equals five, that, it, that means that player one has five points, then I wanted to do winning and then it's going to need a window, which is window and player is going to be one. Now we're going to put elif, that means if something else, elif score two equals equals five, that means that player two has five points, then it's going to do winning, but it's going to be in the same window, and the difference is that player is going to be two. Now we know whether player one or player two won. After either one of them won, we want our program to finish. So for that, we are going to do something similar to what we have right here. We're going to make our flag equals false, which is going to end our loop. And then we're going to tell pygame to quit our display. So we're going to put pygame.display.quit. However, we don't want this to happen immediately. We want people to have a few seconds to know who won. So for that, we are going to need right here to put pygame.time.delay. Remember, this is going to stop our program for some time. So I wanted to wait there for two seconds. So we're going to put 2000. Now I'm just going to copy this and paste it right here. There is something that I want to change before we try the program and it is that I want this section of the code to go after we we redraw our window. That is because I want our scores to update before it tells us who won and who lost. So for that we're just going to cut all of this and we're going to paste it at the very end of our program. Now it's going to update our scores and then it's going to tell us who won. Let's run the program and let's see. I'm going to play for a while just to check if it works. A few moments later. Okay, so as you can see right here, it says player 1-1, one, one, the game pauses, and then it closes. So right now, let's say the game is finished. We got our scoring system, we got our winning screen, and we got everything working. What we are going to do just to finish everything up is make things look better. As you can see from this image, the program that I showed you at the very beginning looked very different to how the program looks right now. That is because I, make it, I made it a little bit better. However, this is going to be a very mathematical section. So if you just want to play the game, you can just leave the game how it is. You don't have to keep going. So now that I gave you guys the heads up, Let's start with rearranging 
the information that we have to create a better screen. The first thing that we're going to do is create two new variables where we created width and height. We're going to create a screen width, which is going to be equal to 1200, and we're going to create a screen height, which is going to be equal to 800. Those are just some numbers that I found. They will work fine. If you want to change them, you can change them. That's not a problem. So now we have to change the size of our window because the size of our window is not going to be width and height any, anymore. It's going to be screen width and it's going to be screen height. So right now it's telling me that there is a problem and that is because I misspelled width, my bad, width. Okay, now it's working. So right now, if I run the program, you'll see the screen is so much bigger than before. And that's kind of what we want. We just have to change everything else. So let's start changing stuff. The first thing that I want to change is the color of our screen. I want our game screen to be black, but I want everything else that's not our game screen to be gray. And gray is 128, 128, and 128 in the RGB mode. And now that we have gray, we have to change the screen's fill. So we're going to put gray right there. Now we have to change this information throughout our code. The first part that I'm going to change is our redraw window. So let's go down to redraw window. In redraw window, we have wind that fill black. We're going to put wind that fill gray. Okay, we're done with redraw window. Let's go up to draw score. In draw score, I don't want the score to be drawn in the middle of our width because width is the width of the game screen, not the total screen's width. So we're going to put screen underscore width green. There we go. So now it works. And that just fixed that little mistake. And I'm going to make the letters a little bit bigger so they look better. I'm going to make them 70, for example. And I'm also going to make it bold. So I'll make it true. This way, it just looks better. Let's run the program just to see how it well, well it looks. You see, the letters look better now, player one and player two. However, it's still very big. So let's change that. Instead of 100, let's make it 80. And let's put that this starts at 50 minus right dot get underscore height divided by two. Why isn't it working? Right dot Oh, because I may have spelled right. Right. There we go. Now it should work. If we run right here, okay, the letters look so much better now. We're also going to change the winning message. The winning message is also going to, to appear in the middle of the total screen. So we're just going to put screen underscore in front of width and screen underscored in front of height. Now we fixed those three functions. Now we only have to worry about the bolts movement and the blocks movement. But before we do that, I want to create a black rectangle that shows us the game screen. So for that, in our redraw window, after we fill the screen gray, I'm going to create our rectangle. So I'm going to put a pie game dot draw dot rect. Now we need a surface that's going to be our window. The color is going to be black. Now the rectangle, remember, has a lot of different parameters that it needs. The first thing that's going to need is the X position. Now the X position is going to be a little bit complicated, so I'm going to put a set of parentheses. So it's going to be screen underscore width, and we're going to subtract 
the the width of our game screen and that we're going to need to divide by two because we want it to be in the center so we want to have portion of the screen to the left and then portion of the screen left to the right we're going to do the same thing for our height so we're going to put a comma and then we put a set of parentheses and we put screen height minus height divided by two now the other two parameters that it needs is the width and the height. We already have them, which is the width and the height. Now we run the program. We see that we have our black rectangle in the middle of the screen. That's where we are going to play. So we have to change everything else to make it fit properly, but it's going to work fine. Now we have to go down to where we created our blocks and our bowl right here. When we create our blocks, we had various parameters. Now we're going to check what those parameters are just to make sure what we have to change. Let's go back where we create our block class right here and we have our X position, our Y position, our width, our height, and our color. Now the only two things that we have to change is our X and our Y position. So let's go back down to our main loop right here in our main function we have to change both of these parameters so we want our block to start at this position a tenth of the total of the width of the game screen but to that we have to add the amount of screen that is going to be to the left side of it that we already know it but I'm still going to do it step by step so we need to add our screen width minus our width and all dot divided by two because this is going to give us that that part where the game screen starts in our y-axis we know that we want the block to start in the middle of the screen because we already know that our rectangle is properly placed in the middle of the screen then we know that the middle of the screen is also the middle of the height of the screen. So we can just put screen height divided by 2 minus 75. Now we just have to modify block 2. Our y-axis is going to be the same. So I'm going to do that one first. We just put a screen underscore height. Now we have to change our block's x position the x position for block 2 is going to be a little bit complicated so i'm going to write it and then i'm going to explain it as best as i can so the first thing is that we're going to start at our screen's width screen width meaning the total width of the screen from that point we have to start subtracting things one of them is this part right here which is the amount that the block is going to be from the game screen so now we have to subtract the amount that the game screen is going to be from the total screen's width and we know that that is this section of the code because it has a symmetry so i'm going to copy it and paste it right here so now if i run the program block one and block two start within the block the black rectangle so they are working fine now we're going to need to do the same thing for our bowl let's first check the parameters that we need to create our bowl right here in our bowl class we see that they are the x the y the radius and the color again we only need to change the x and the y which are the initial x and y coordinates that the ball is going to have they're actually very simple because we know that the ball is going to start in the middle of the screen which we already said before is also the middle of the total screen which means that we just have to put screen underscore in front of width and screen underscore in front of height so if we run again the pro the program we said the ball started in the middle so it is working right now now we only have to change 
the parameters that we are giving our move function. So when they move, they move inside our rectangle, not inside these old parameters. What those parameters were, if we remember when we created the move functions, this parameter was the top of the screen, this parameter was the bottom of the screen. So let's first change those two. The top of the screen, we're going to put inside parentheses to make it simpler, is going to be the total screen's height minus the height of the game board divided by 2. The bottom side is going to be the total screen height and then we have to subtract this same part. That is because now that is the amount that's going to be left between the total screen and the game screen. Now we have the top and the bottom. We can just copy both of this and we can paste them in our block 2 and we can also paste them in our bowl. Now we got them working. Now block 1 and block 2 should be working fine. So let's run the program and we see block 2 move to the bottom, it doesn't go any farther, and go to the top, and it doesn't go any farther. Now, block one goes to the top, doesn't go any farther, and then goes all the way to the bottom, and it doesn't go any farther. So right now, they are working. Now we just have to change our ball. That is because if you see here in the program, the ball ends right there, and it can go all the way past our block to the very end of the screen. So we have to change that part. So in here, where we called our ball.move function, we have these two other parameters. This parameter is the left side of the screen, and this parameter is the right side of the screen. We already know both of them when we created our blocks. If we go back to our blocks, we know that this section of the code is the left side of the screen because our block one is starting this amount from the left side of the screen. So we can just copy this section of the code, copy it, and then paste it where the zero is meant to be. Now the right side of the screen, we also know, and that part of the screen is this one, the screen width minus the screen width minus width divided by two. We know that because our block 2 starts at this amount from the right side of the screen. So we can just copy this section of the code, the screen underscore width minus screen underscore width minus width divided by 2. And now that we have that copied, we can just paste it where the width is meant to be, paste it, and now everything should be working. So let's run the program, the ball goes all the way to the right and it finishes and then it goes all the way to the left and it also finishes. So right now everything is working. As I said in the very first video we're going to do a very simple main menu just so the game doesn't start right away when we call the program. For that we're going to create at the very bottom one more function and it's going to be the last one. It'll be dev menu, so it's not going to need anything else. The first thing that we're going to do is fill our window when that fill with black. Then we're going to create a font which is very similar to how we did before. Font equals spy game dot font that says font. Again I just like Arial but you can put whatever you want. We're also going to put 100 because it looked nice in size and we're going to make it true, just so it looks very big. Now we're going to create a text. Now we're going to create a text, which is going to be font.render, and it's going to need a text, something that's going to say. I'm going to put it straight away, which is going to be press to play. It's going to be horizontal, so we put a 1, and the color is going to be white. Now we need that text to split into our window. So I put a win.blit, 
open close parenthesis and it's a source so the source is going to be the text and the destination is going to be the middle of the screen so that is going to be screen width divided by 2 comma screen height divided by 2 now we have that and we're going to create a flag so flag is going to be equal to true now this part this part we already know it while flag meaning while flag is true and we're going to do for event in pygame dot event dot get so for every event that we do pressing a key moving the mouse everything then the program is going to know that something happened so for every event that it happens we're going to check if event dot type equals equals pygame dot quit remember you're always going to need to put a pygame dot quit that is just in case someone presses their x on the right side of the screen so if someone does that we're going to put flag equals false and we're also going to put pygame dot quit after we put that one we're going to create another if event so we're going to put if event dot type equals equals pygame dot key down or event dot type equals equals pygame dot mouse button down so that is, that is either if the person pressed a key on the keyboard or if a person pressed the left mouse button on the mouse then it's going to do the next thing it's going to execute our main function so it's going to be main open and close parenthesis now that we have that instead of calling main here we're going to call our menu so now we should run the program and okay nothing showing up that is my mistake that is because I forgot right here to update so I put a pygame dot display dot update so now we run the program and we see press to play it looks very far off let's change that now with the width we want to be in the center as you can see so we have to subtract text dot get width open and close divided by two now it should look better yes press to play so let's click and then the game starts everything looks very nice if I close right here then everything closes now let's try it again I'm going to play for a while until uh, one of the players lose a few moments later so as you can see it says player 1-1 one, one, and then it closes the game okay there is something that I want to change in the code and that is that right here when either player 1 or player 2 win we don't have to put pygame that quit this way whenever either player 1 or player 2 wins then it's not going to exit out the game it's just going to send you back to the main menu okay that's it for this punk tutorial hope you enjoyed it and that it was useful if you have any questions or any suggestions any comments you can leave them down below now next time I'm going to do a little video on how to make the ball go faster I didn't put it right here because it will be a very long video and the ball speeding up it is a little bit more complicated so I'll just create a different video on its own it'll be a lot shorter and simpler so yes I hope you enjoyed everything and thank you very much for watching mm -hmm.